Isaiah chapter number 20, Proverbs being the 20th book of the Bible. In the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon, now Sargon's reign was from 722 to 715 BC, so this can be dated. Sargon, the king of Assyria, went, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. So between 722 and 715 BC, this happened. At the same time, spanked the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go. That's a that's a verb that is used by God throughout the Bible. And somebody who works in a grocery store, as I do, the grocery store has been pretty much most, most of my life. There's a, there's a particular weird thing I've been seeing lately. Juices, applesauce, uh, macaroni and cheese. It's, it's these things that are called on the go. Yeah, you take them and, and you, when you leave. How come the world can get something and sell you something on the go and a Christian can't get up and get going when God tells them to go? Go is also, believe it or not, a word that is a word that is your shortest sentence that you can make in the English language. You can say go and period. And that's a sentence. I don't know how, but that's what I've looked up and, and read with my own eyes. A go is the shortest sentence you can do. And loose the sackcloth from off thy loins. Now, sackcloth is that itchy stuff. It's that stuff that you're in mourning. He's in mourning. He's wearing sackcloth. We haven't read that. The things that God has been showing him about Judah and about the people has driven him to wear sackcloth. And God says, remove it. Why? To be in cheer and put off thy shoes from thy foot. Okay. And he did so walking naked and barefoot. Don't you just love what God has these, these, these men of his do for illustration to the people? He tells one of his prophets, I want you to go get a whore. I want you to marry her. What are you doing? Marrying that woman. This woman is a representation of what you people are in the eyes of God. Ezekiel is another one he has fun. Hey, get your little army, man. Build your little army city and all that. And get a big pan. I want you to lay on your side this amount of days. And lay on your other side this amount of days. And the Lord said. And he just wanted to get Ezekiel, God tells us, you know, with, with man's dung, Ezekiel, uh, excuse me, I have not eaten anything unclean. Okay, I'll give you cow's dung. You just wonder, when they, how they hear God speak, I don't know. Is it a voice? I don't know. But he just, whatever it is, I want you to go naked and barefoot. And the holiness of God would not drive you, I would assume, if you're this close to the Lord as these prophets are, that they are in the Holy Bible. I think maybe, I don't know, I don't know with human nature, but here you are so close to God. Okay, there's no question. If God tells you to go out naked and barefoot, and it's from God and you know it is God, okay, fine. But when you when you see people do it for Satan and at the beach, and when you go to the Bible principle of nakedness, it's not your secret parts being exposed. Read the Bible. 
But when you go to a place like a beach like Daytona Beach, Florida, there are secret parts that are exposed. And they're wearing covering. And I don't know if you know it, Father. I don't know if you know it, husband. But when you put your girl in that bikini, you are having your daughter, your wife, go out there with her bra and panties. That's what it is. It's a bra and panties with just a color. For bail. And for everybody to look on. Oh, look at those body parts. Woohoo! No, they will do it in their front yard today. Don't look at window. Isaiah is doing it not for the show of the flesh. Isaiah is doing it as a principle of a prophecy that is going to happen to a group of people. And the Lord said unto him, and the Lord said, Like as my servant, that's his job, Moses. Abraham, Jacob, Caleb, Cyrus, Zerubbabel, Nebuchadnezzar. Isaiah is in a group, of, good group of people here. Job, I want you to. Be, you know, you, you've never read where Job got healed. Did he have those boils? But bear those boils, Moses. Bear the reproach of the people. Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years. That's a long time. You tell your average Christian, hey, I want you to go walk barefoot and naked for three years. Yahoo! And Hollywood would come in and make it some kind of reality TV program. Watch these Christians walk around. We'll have these group of we'll have these group of Christians walking around barefoot and naked. We'll have these bunch bunch of Christians who who eat this the specific cereal of the Bible, which people are not buying, and now it's going to close down. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? But I do. Three years. Three years. There are people who do that longer on the beach. Now watch this. Three years. For a sign. What's First Corinthians one twenty one say? Or twenty two? Signs are for Jews. Watch this. And wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. Isaiah is assigned to Egypt and Ethiopia, not the Jews. Why is Isaiah doing that? Because something's going to happen to e Egypt and Ethiopia. That's what signs were for us. And I guarantee Isaiah ain't doing that. I bet he's doing it. I bet he was probably the the first streaker. Man, when he had to go to the grocery store, boom, he'd get down there fast. He can't get back where he's going right away. I don't know. I don't think he, he's, he's modifying the flesh or anything. He's doing it for a sign and a wonder. And you know he's a talk of the town. Did you see Isaiah today? If Isaiah were to do that in Daytona Beach, Florida today, did you see what Isaiah did today? Walk naked? Well, everybody else was doing it. They weren't all naked and barefoot. They wouldn't be able to tell who Isaiah was. And the sign is for Egypt and upon Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoner. Uh-oh. 
and the Ethiopians captive. Oh, so the, the Ethiopians and the Egyptians are going to be, they're going to be naked, they're going to be barefoot, but they're going to be in chains as prisoners of war, as captives of battle. Isaiah is a warning to Egypt and to the Ethiopians. Somewhere in the Old Testament, Ethiopia defies God. Into Acts chapter 8, when the first man that is saved in the Bible like we are saved, is a man that went to Jerusalem, comes on his way home, and he's got a, a scroll or a Bible track or something. He happens to be reading Isaiah 53. And he doesn't believe in water salvation. He believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and then is baptized for salvation. Unless you have a new Bible that's perverted and cuts out certain parts of the story. And we read last night's study that Egypt is going to get right. It's going to stand before the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But right now, they are prisoners of war. In chains. Naked. And you know what that would be? That would be humiliation. Humiliation. To be have to be prod around in chains naked. And yet today in America, the nakedness is this widespread. Well, what about the chains? Well, you can see all kinds of documentaries in jail life about the ones in jail, and there's no shame that they're in jail. See how happy they are. See how they take their extra meals and, and make their little cakes and stuff like that. And see them playing games. See them having a good old time playing sports and, and everything else. With a smile on their face. A couple of them will rap for you. And here's a group of people. Africans. Who have been captured. They have been disrobed. They are in chains. Young and old. The ones that you. The, 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 the ball players. And the elders. Naked. And barefoot. Now, what you forget is you're in a region that's the Middle East and Africa. It's a desert kind of climate. It's hot. I don't know what the soil is like. It could be hard sand. It could be rocky kind of sand. They wear sandals. I would assume it's some kind of would be some kind of a uh, uh, pain on the finger, on the finger, on the hand, on the boy, on the feet. Even with their buttocks uncovered, so there is some parts of the flesh that are exposed. They did that to David's men. And shave half their beards off. But there is your hiney being exposed in chains. How many people, if they could tomorrow, go walk around with their butt hanging out? Would they? you got a whole generation of people that, that don't even know how to put their pants on. My friend, let me give you a little prophecy. If they're allowed to wear their pants below their butt with their underwear on, how long do you think before they can put the underwear below 
the butt line. Tracy and I, we haven't been in the streets for about a month with sickness and all going on. But before, before all this sickness and trouble, we saw a woman cross A1A. I don't know how to describe it. No, the one that had the, 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 the what was it, the frog? And my friend, you couldn't see the, the strap. I'm trying to be decent here. But you saw the butt cheats uncovered walking across the street. So it's already happening. I don't even want to describe the guy that we saw down in Daytona Beach walking down the beach. I don't even know what that was. But the hiney was showing. 2014-2015. But this is shame. This is to embarrass the people. The Assyrians are going to carry these guys around like a, like a bunch of fish on a fishing line. Look what we caught. It's to degrace them. To degree, degree, uh, degrade them. We've gone a long way. Backwards. I remember times growing up, if a, if a woman was partially enclosed and, and me or, uh, you know, kids would be, she'd cover herself up and apologize. She did it in the backyard with a fence and no one who wasn't supposed to be looking. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia. Their expectation in, of Egypt, their glory. Israel has been putting a lot of love and care and worship back in Egypt and Ethiopia. And they have been receiving that worship. So God said, I'll break you. Go ahead, Israel. Now look where they are. You know, when Israel was in Babylon, oh, we're having a good time over here. All right, watch this. And the city's destroyed in one night. Egypt in all their glory, God destroyed them with ten plagues and their gods. And Israel in the wilderness in the middle of that, oh, we want to go back to Egypt. What, the losers? A king, I forget which king it is, he goes into battle, he, he gets victory, and he starts picking up the, the gods that fail. And sends a priest out, hey, I saw this altar, go make, go make a copy of that altar. Of the losers. And the happens of this isle shall say in that day behold such is our expectation whether we f flee for help to be delivered from the king of Syria how shall we escape Syria is a, is a nation you don't mess with they're, they're cruel their instruments of cruelty what they've done to their prisoners and to the people they've taken captive are Cruel. And here they come taking a group of people away. The Egyptians and the, the Ethiopians. Which we see both of them getting right later. It's cruelty to a human being. 